Good day and welcome to our service of midday prayer today. Welcome to Mothers' Union members worldwide and to any others who have joined us for this service today. My name is Dr. Rosemary Mallet and I am the Archdeacon of Croydon in the Diocese of Southwark. Diocese of Southwark comprises most of South London and East Surrey. I think I've been asked to lead the service today possibly for three reasons, all of which I'm very proud as I am to be leading this service. The first is that up until recently, I was the Director of Justice, Peace and the Integrity of Creation for the Diocese of Southwark. Those three concepts, those three um, areas of work are very much a uh, central focus for all Christians in our understanding as to how we live out our faith. Part of the work of that department was to focus on diversity and inclusion, and in particular on black and minority ethnic people and their representation in the diocese and the way in which we work with them in our churches and in our parishes. I think the third reason why I hope that I've been asked to lead the service today is that in January of this year I was in Zimbabwe and I was welcomed as a member of the Anglican Women's Fellowship which is part of the Zimbabwean Mothers Union. So I feel very much like I'm one of the members of the Mothers Union also. So, midday prayer today will be just a little bit different to normal. We're going to have our normal set of prayers and then we're going to extend them today as we combine them with um, special prayers and reflections on the situation in which we find ourselves. Not only the pandemic, which continues apace and is still extremely challenging for people throughout the world in this country and in countries such as Zimbabwe, and we also want to reflect on the situation um, after the tragic death of George Floyd in America and the protests and the actions and the call for justice that has come about as the result of, of that death. I'm delighted to share with you that the Mothers' Union Worldwide President, Sharon Harper, is going to join um, us and lead a short reflection to help us as we journey, perhaps to challenge us in our thoughts in terms of how we act, and then also to lead us in prayers for change and for equality. And then we will end the uh, prayers for today with a blessing. So let us join together as Mother Union members around the world do every day in solidarity to pray on the day prayers. The theme of these prayers, Hope in Times of Uncertainty, was written over a month ago, probably as we were going into the real lockdown of the result of the pandemic and just worried about the uncertain times that that had brought about. No one could have thought that you could have added even more uncertainty to the times. But clearly the death of George Floyd has brought about even more uncertainty for a great number of people. Let us pray. The Lord is good, a strong refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who hope in him. In our anxiety, fear and uncertainty, when hearts are heavy with the load we bear, and there is no one to turn to but you. Yours is the peace that comes, the peace that comforts, the peace that gives us strength to carry on. Yours is the voice we long to hear, the persistent whisper in our ear, be still and know that I am God. Yours is the presence in the dark that banishes our fears. Yours is the hand that guides, the footprints in which we walk. We pray together. In our anxiety, fear and uncertainty, 
in confidence, we turn to you. Amen. Let us now join in our wave of prayer. And today we pray for the strength of Mother's Union around the world, but especially Yambio in South Sudan, Garissa in Kenya, Mbamili in Nigeria, Hereford in England, Lilokra in Australia, and for Thailand. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Those were George Floyd's last words. For people struggling with the effect of the pandemic on their lives, for many of them, it's been about being able to breathe as their lungs have been affected. So even before George Floyd's death, in that horrific way on the streets, we were already in the midst of a pandemic, a virus, which was stopping people from being able to breathe properly. And for some people, the most vulnerable, taking their lives away. And then the virus of racism, another worldwide pandemic, brought the whole world to a stop when we heard George Floyd say those words, I can't breathe, as his breath was crushed out of him because of the color of his skin. I can't breathe. As we reflect on the way in which the Holy Spirit gives us breath, enables us to call on God as our hope and our salvation in times of challenge and difficulty. That very breath that we have been given, our inspiration to love and to live our love into the world, we need to be able to think of how we can use that inspiration to breathe, to speak, to let our voices be heard, to let George Floyd's voice be heard, to let all the nameless other people who have died because of acts of racism, to let their voices be heard. For us to work together, to make a difference, to speak God's love out and to let people know that we stand together with our brothers and sisters, people of colour, people in deep poverty, people who need us to breathe with them and sometimes to breathe for them. Mothers Union members, you do fantastic work around the world in enabling others to live lives that would not have been possible because of the challenges they face. This challenge, this scourge of racism, needs to be called out and we need to speak it out across all of our platforms and to let everyone know that the Mother's Union, which stands for the unity of all women and children throughout the world, but all people, let everyone know that that indivisible unity also recognises the tear in humanity because of the scourge of racism and that we will work collaboratively to see what we can do to make a difference. I now close out this short reflection by um, taking time now to step aside and to introduce Sharon Harper, your worldwide president, who's going to now lead a short reflection. Thank you, Archdeacon Rosemary, Mother's Union members and friends. This is so difficult for me. The recent events of the past two weeks 
have compelled me to stop and deeply reflect on all that is happening in response to the senseless, callous snuffing out of the life of George Floyd, the tearing apart of family, a young daughter, instead of growing up with loving memories, at this tender age, she may only remember her daddy's pleading. I can't breathe, as he took his final breath. What happened to George Floyd is not only his story. It is nothing new or isolated. It is the story of countless sisters and brothers, communities and nations across the world, resulting from centuries of systemic oppression, deep-seated racism and discrimination in every form. We may not think this is about us. We may think these things happen in another country or another town or village, but it is closer to home than we think. It's in our workplaces and our meeting places, in the very places we long to be loved where we long to feel equal and accepted, where we hope for a chance in life. Of course, it's hard to think that we have contributed in any way, but if we search deep in our hearts, we may find that each and every one of us has perpetrated social injustice sometime during our lives, some more than others. If not by our actions, then sometimes by remaining silent when we needed to speak out. So many of us are more likely to be victims, still hurting and passing on that hurt, psychologically scarred and now suffering. We have strayed far from acting as Jesus would have us and from sharing the generous love of Jesus, that deep, unending and unconditional love that we have all experienced as Christians. The first letter of John chapter 3 and verse 18 reminds us, My children, our love should not just be words and talk, but it must be true love which shows itself in action. Just about a year ago, Archdeacon Rosemary called the church to action, to be proactive rather than reactive in response to rising levels of crime among young people, resulting from lack of opportunities and discrimination. Today, I call Mother's Union to further action. You are doing so much already, and I thank you. But there is still so much more to be done. Some of our members suffer at the heart of injustice each day, if one member suffers, then we all suffer. Let the death of George Floyd be the catalyst for change, for there must be change, beginning with each and every one of us. Systemic oppression is an injustice. It must be condemned and removed from God's world. May I ask you to join me in using today for reflection and prayer. And we begin by praying now. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew. Lord, help us to be strong 
as we renew our commitment to love as you love us, to act as you would have us act, to look on others with compassion, to strive to treat each other just as we would have others treat us, as together we find lasting solutions to end injustice. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sharon, for those heartfelt words. Thank you for that prayer, which centers us back to an understanding of how we do need to speak and to act and be alongside, standing together, and sometimes be in the very breath of those that need to speak and can't breathe. So let us pray. We go in thanks for the goodness of God, our sure and steadfast hope in every circumstance. Amen.